bond electron bond only two molecules we have to memorize here two types of quad electron bond we have one electron and three electron bond one electron and three electron bond we call it as odd electron bond we also call it as half bond half bond since its bond order since its bond order is half right since odd of uh, half bond bond order is half its bond strength of an odd electron bond bond strength is less than less than the bond strength of strength of single bond okay the molecule in which odd electron bond is present we call it as paramagnetic molecule because it is because of odd number of electrons unpaired electrons and o oh, examples of this like i said only two examples we have to memorize n o n o 2 n o and n o 2 N O two has the N O has the bond order is this has three electron bond and in this we have one electron bond present three electron and one electron bond. No, no, like because you see. This one is see, N O is how many electrons? Fifty, right? Fifty electrons. When you draw the configuration of this, this is sigma one is, sigma star one is, sigma two is, sigma star two is, then sigma two p z, pi two p x, pi two p y. Pi star two p x, pi star two p y, and sigma star. Right? When you distribute the electron here, two, four, six, eight, nine, or nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and one here. Right? What is the bond order you get here? Can you tell me the bond order? Two point five, four, six, and ten. Ten minus five divided by two, two point five. Bond order is two point five. That half point five that you have, that means it has an odd electron bond. Okay. So this. Uh, can you draw the Lewis structure of N O? Lewis structure of N O. Doesn't the Lewis structure fail with all electrons? No, uh, it's not because it, it is not a regular bond. We won't get here, and that's why it is different. Why I am doing this? You understand? This has eleven valence electrons, right? So one, two, right? Then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight plus two, ten. And uh, one electron will have. So it, it, it is not similar to the molecule that we did already, where we have even number of electrons present. Okay. So when you place this one lone pair of electron here as a bond pair, and in this what happens? This bond pair, this lone pair converts into bond pair here with the one electron or electron of nitrogen also. This is the three. It is not normal or the usual Lewis dot structure that we have in other molecules. That's why we generally don't draw the Lewis dot structure of the molecule which contains odd number of electrons. 
but if you have to draw the molecule will be this so it has one double bond and double bond o with one lone pair and one bond also present which is an all electron bond contains three electrons in this bond the bond order of that third three electron bond is half two bond we already have that's why it is double bond we have 11 electrons, do you think? Yes, sir, that's what we have done. So, there's one more lone pair of nitrogen. So, we'll have one lone pair. So, here it is. Here, now again, like there are only 7 electrons shared. So, like, won't one... Won't let... No, it's not a normal bond. You see, first of all, why we are drawing this structure here? Because bond order says that it has 2.5 bond order. Means two regular bond we have, one half bond we have. Odd electron bond. That's why we are not moving only one lone pair here to make a triple bond here. So 3.5. That three electron bond is 0.5. So what is one? So why can't you? bond is also 0.5. So if you two, then you have octet for both. But see, why? According to this, we are drawing the structure. Bond order of NO is what? 2.5. So when you draw a triple bond there, its bond order should be 3, which is not we are getting. That nothing is absolute here. Because the no, because the bond order is 2.5 for NO. That's why the Lewis bond is also with this, and we suggest that we have a, an odd electron bond in N. If you write a triple bond there, simply draw a triple bond, that its bond order should be what? 3. Is not getting. So according to that bond order, what should be the structure? It has one odd electron bond or a half bond. That's why the bond order of odd electron bond is always half and we are getting 2.5 there. Is it the electron bond? No, no, no. See, they have their tendency, but when you draw that structure, it should define the bond order of that molecule. Right? We have to draw that structure according to that, the bond order must be you know defined. That's why we are drawing out electron bond. So all the molecules where you are getting 0.5 as the uh, you know bond order, that 0.5 means what? We'll have an odd half bond, odd electron bond. Okay, odd electron bond is uh, one electron and three electron bond. Very rare. Like I've given you NO and NO2. In NO2 we have one electron bond present, and here we have three electron bond present. Only that two you need to remember. Okay. So we are drawing this structure according to the bond order that we are getting. Uh, how much charge you can calculate? Find on how many power charge you have. That my point is we'll have an odd electron bond order. Three electrons. Okay. So so what which term is how much bond order? Ha, one electron bond or three electron bond is an odd electron bond. It has half bond characteristics. That is experimental. You need to remember it. That's why I have written it over there. NO3 electron bond, NO2 one electron bond. You won't get more than these. Okay. Only you need to understand that wherever you are getting 0.5, it means there is a half bond That's why 0.5 is the bond order. One bond. The bond order is 1, so 0.5 means there is a half bond. That is another one. Okay. Since so the charge of nitrogen is NO3. See, NO is now, NO is, it behaves in the ligand. It behaves in the ligand, okay. in the ligand. and it, it, it may show positive charge on it, it may show, may have neutral molecule. Okay. Ligand. ligand is electron pair donors, it donates electron to the metal. Okay. So nitro, NO in some compounds they have tendency to behave as positive ligand. It's, it's a bit uh, we call it as naughty ligand. Okay, can you be neutral or can you positive charge? Okay, so that is also there is a test in chemistry that is brown ring test. Okay, brown ring test may use that. Okay. So, so this we need to know, like you need to memorize this. NO pair can be positive charge. Uh, it will be difficult because there is odd electron, so some factory value you must be getting. Uh, that's why, that's why I am not calculating formal charge over there. 
But if you want to know what charge present on the nitrogen, that idea whether it is positive or negative value, let it be, that you will get the idea from common charge. Because the charge will be between the two. Yes, you can see. Overall, it should be neutral. So one is positive, other one is negative, equal magnitude. Okay. NO is nitrosyl. It is nitrosyl. Okay. And NO plus is nitrocelium. It's for end of we have this in coordination chemistry. Okay. But you need to know what, what is the significance. See, when I say border is 0.5, so what is the significance of this? It means it has an purpose point. Right? NO has three electron bond, NO2 has one electron bond. Okay. So the next, next chapter we are going to start with the states of matter. Okay, so what are different states of matter we have? What have you done? Okay, you have done this chapter in the school, right? What is the space of matter? Solid, liquid and gas. Any other? Plasma, 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 plasma. that is very high temperature, very high temperature, right? To me, there are, in general, there are three different states of matter we have, and that is solid, liquid, and gas. What is the difference between this, among these three um, all states of matter? What is the major difference here? Why we have three differences? Huh? Intermolecular force, distance, and separation. The major difference is what? Intermolecular force. Then we have maximum intermolecular force, solid, right? So intermolecular force, IMF, for solid is maximum and then for liquid and for gas it is minimum. So gaseous molecules have minimum intermolecular force of attraction. That's why in any, anywhere if you see the motion of gases molecules, they have random motion, right? They travel in all directions randomly. Okay. Because they have minimum uh, intermolecular force of attraction, right? So two gases molecules, the interaction between the two is very less over here, minimum, and hence they have random motion, okay? Solid molecules are strongest because they have strong intermolecular force that's why whenever you want to pick some solid species you have to apply some force right liquid molecules have in between the force of attraction that's why it can flow right so when you increase the intermolecular force of attraction the molecular motion is hindered right it will be less solid molecules does not move uh, as compared to the liquid and gas okay here in this chapter we are going to discuss about the gaseous uh, uh, state okay we have uh, solid state also that is in 12th standard. I don't know whether they have changed the syllabus or not because last year I taught the solid state in 11th standard in Rajinagar. Okay. But somewhere they have taken this in 12th standard. Okay. So whatever it is, but solid state and liquid is as gases state we'll discuss in chemistry. Liquid state will look for the physics, fluid mechanics. Right. So all these three states we have to study in 11th and 12th standard. Solid and gas will study in chemistry. Liquid mainly will study in. Uh, right. So gas is a state you see. The major difference is what? Major difference is the intermolecular force of attraction. Right? So if you increase the intermolecular force of attraction by any means, right? So we'll have a range of intermolecular force in which the molecules lies in this solid state. For a given value of IMF, we'll have liquid state and gas state. So when you increase the intermolecular force of attraction, gas has tendency to convert into liquid and then into solid, okay? So, since the intermolecular force is high or maximum here, so whenever you have, you increase the intermolecular force by any means, okay? Intermolecular force between the two molecules increases, then they have tendency to change their state, right? For one value, gas converts into liquid. Further you increase, liquid converts into solid. When you put water into the freezer, what happens then? It converts into ice. Why it happens? Why ice converts, sorry, water converts into ice? 
when you put into equation, huh? particles reduce. And how the energy reduces? Because in prism we have low temperature, right? Temperature is very low. See the molecules are what? Molecules are randomly moving, right? These molecules of any state, they have random motion, right? So by any means, if you increase the intermolecular force of attraction, and how do we increase that? When the interaction between the molecules increases, correct? If the molecules are moving very fast, right, their interaction will be less. Train will travel here. Train will train wapas at the opposite direction. It's difficult to, you know, see who on their inside and what train is. Why? Because the speed is very fast. You cannot interact. That's only. So when the two molecules, when the two molecules cross each other, with very high speed, they have very less tendency to interact with each other, right? And if you in, if you decrease this uh, velocity, right, interaction increases, and then we have possibility that this converts into liquid and then into gas, right? So point is we have to increase the intermolecular force of attraction, and that we can increase by decreasing temperature. Low temperature means low kinetic energy. Low kinetic means low kinetic energy means what? Less velocity. Less velocity means more interaction. So one possibility is to decrease the temperature. That's why in lower, uh, in freezer we have low temperature, so water molecules start interacting with each other, and then it converts into ice. The another one is what high pressure. If you increase the pressure, the gaseous molecules comes closer to each other, right? And when they come, when they comes closer, then what happens? Interaction will be more, right? The two factors we have: one is pressure when we increase the pressure, and other one is when we decrease the temperature. The states of matter make it change into these two conditions. Correct? How this uh, conversion takes place that we'll also discuss in liquefaction of gas. That is not Avogadro. Uh, that is not ideal gas. That is the equation of state. It is the equation of state. Ah, uh, tell if uh, number of moles and volume is constant, then no. So what I am telling you that for first of all, it is not gas. I am talking about the uh, you know the change in state. I am talking about the change in state. When it is possible, either you increase the pressure or you decrease the temperature. So when state changes, there you cannot apply PV is equals to NR. But that is gaseous law that is only applicable for gaseous law. Okay, I am talking about something else. I am talking about, suppose if this gas has to convert into liquid, what you will do? You will increase the pressure or you will decrease the temperature. Because eventually we have to increase the intermolecular force. Intermolecular interaction we have to increase. That's what we are discussing. Anyways, so all these things we are going to... What? No, at a time, at a time, if you are increasing pressure, fine. Or decreasing temperature also fine, but both if you are changing, then both should be either you should both you cannot change, but you can change also. That is very easier to uh, you know convert the phase into that. But again, like you cannot compare this with PV is equals to NRT because that is only for gases. Okay, you can change both or any one of the two. That's not it.